Celestial greetings. I'm Janet Booth, a professional astrologer from West Hartford, Connecticut, and welcome to my program on astrology called Looking Up. This episode is entitled 2018, Time to Get Serious. And believe me, it is. What do they say? Fun and games are over? Well, really, before we can talk about 2018, I have to just mention briefly, since this show will begin airing in December of 2017, that we still have December to finish up 2017. And we have a full moon that's going to be pretty intense coming up right at the beginning of the month. You might not even see this program till after it's over, and then you can think about how did that full moon manifest. But the sun and moon, always across from each other at a full moon, make the T with Neptune. And Neptune, of course, is everything about confusion, um, swimming around in circles, kind of like, you know, rules Pisces, the fish. It's about imagination, whether that's towards positive visualization or towards worry and um, paranoia, things like that. And it's wonderful for entertainment. So at least you should try to be very entertained around that full moon. And another thing that's coming up pretty important, Mars is going into Scorpio. You know, it used to be the ruler of Scorpio before there was Pluto discovered. And that starts the 9th of December and it goes to the 26th of January. And Mars is usually uh, get things moving, and Scorpio is very good for throwing things out. So if you need to do some clean out a little bit ahead of the holidays, Mars is your buddy for doing that. Then we have the new moon on the 18th of December, and it's very close to the degree of the galactic center. That would be the center of the Milky Way galaxy because we're on the outer edges. When we look to the center, what sign do we see it aligning with or what? Yes, what sign? And um, it kind of gives a universal galactic perspective, puts us in touch with things far and wide, makes us think big, which is always the case with Sagittarius anyway. And that is the last day that Saturn is in Sagittarius because on the 19th it moves into Capricorn. And that's the main reason why I said it's time to get serious. So Saturn goes through that galactic center degree near Thanksgiving time. And I don't know if there'll be anything very important happening around then that involves people far and wide, but we'll see as I'm recording this ahead of Thanksgiving. So one of the main reasons why I said 2018, time to get serious, is because of Saturn going into Capricorn. It's the most serious planet, and Capricorn is the sign where it rules. Saturn's in charge of systems, organizations, how things are set up, um, putting all your ducks in a row, making long-term plans. And so when it gets into the sign that it's in charge of, it's very much about, well, what do we want to do? How do we want to accomplish it? You know, putting one foot in front of the next and taking action. This is one of the four what we call cardinal signs, not cardinal sins, but the cardinal signs. And those are the signs that occur when the sun goes through them at the beginning of each season. So <clears throat> they usually have um, more of an action orientation. And they're more about confronting things, too. And when we see that Saturn rules Capricorn, and we know that Pluto has been going through Capricorn for years now, and its main job is to kind of stir things up, mm, almost like dig things up, bring things out that have been buried. And Pluto's also, like the sign Scorpio I was talking about with Mars going into Scorpio, it's about getting rid of the dead wood and what's not working for us anymore. And so in that sense, when Saturn is going to come up and join Pluto, and that will be more in 2019, we'll find a lot of things are really changing on a systemic level. Saturn and Capricorn together rule governments and laws. So <clears throat> we're going to see some shakeups in governments, or let's say maybe straightening things out. Maybe it's not so much shaking things up. Now, most of the time uh, in 2018, Jupiter will be in Scorpio, and I believe we started to talk about that with the October program because Jupiter entered Scorpio on October 10th, and it stays until 
November 8th of 2018. So that's most of next year. And Jupiter is, of course, the biggest planet. It expands whatever it's going through. Pluto, uh, the ruling planet of Scorpio, and the sign of Scorpio together are associated with joint money matters, banking industry, stock markets, commodities. Of course, we've had a very nice run of stocks going up, up, up. And hmm, I kind of expected the beginning of this week, now I'm taping this on the 15th of November. I said, wow, Venus, the money planet, is together with Jupiter in Scorpio, and I thought all the markets would go up. And they just took a little dip, not a big dip, but a little one. I went, hmm, anyway, I'm not a market specialist, obviously. But I do think that throughout 2018, we're going to enjoy the benefit of Jupiter in Scorpio, keeping the stock market and commodity markets up. And I've heard some other astrologers say that there are some long-term cycles in place, not just that one, that also look good for 2018. So we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. And one of the nicest things that's going on with that is that you know, Scorpio and Capricorn are two signs apart in the zodiac. And this is 60 degrees and a connection called sextile, kind of like one-sixth. And we're going to find Jupiter forms that exact connection or aspect with Pluto three times, which is fairly normal. You know, Jupiter um, spends about four, a little more than four months out of each year in that retrograde backtracking. And of course, it goes forward through the range. It's going to back up and then comes forward through that range again after it backs up. So it oftentimes makes connections three times to other, like, let's say, slow planets. And that's what it's doing. It's got the um, 15th of January, the 14th of April, and the 12th of September are all the sextiles to Pluto. And Jupiter, because it's the quickest of the slower planets, is more apt to make connections to the other slow planets. And it also has a nice one during 2018, and that would be a third of the sky with Neptune that's midway through Pisces. Now, Pisces and Scorpio are two of the water signs, and this opens up feelings very uh, deeply. I mean, Scorpio is a deep sign anyway, and Jupiter expands those deep feelings. And then Pisces has that sort of all-embracing and healing kind of energy. So I think we'll find that this is a good year for well, media and entertainment, because Jupiter rules media and Neptune rules entertainment. And it might be good for research, which is what Scorpio is good for, into medical matters, which is Neptune's purvey. We are going to see this trine twice in 2018 on 525 and 819. So those are some of the good things to look forward to in 2018. You know, when I've looked at these years in depth, as I always do for creating my Janet's Planets, we've had so many years with so many difficult things, and some of them were slow and just kept going on and on and on. And what we really want to see is that kind of lighten up and give us a break, and 2018 is that break. There are no really nasty long-term, slow, 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 over and over again um, aspects that are coming in. And I'll talk about what the toughest one is, but it's still not as nasty as what we've been seeing. So I'd like to say, oh, great, this is going to be a super year. Well, the thing is, and it's going to be better. I do believe it'll be better than some years that we've been having the last many. But almost every time the best things were coming in, and I go looking through to try to find my best days, I want to recommend days you could start a new venture, or recommend days when you could get married. Every time there's something good happening, there's something else happening with it that ain't so great. So it's like, yeah, kind of a men's and men's a good year. <clears throat> like, it could be better, and it could be worse. So. That's what we have to say about that. Now, we do have um, a very big shift coming to 
on some of these slow outer planets. We've had Uranus going through Aries for seven years. And when it first came into Aries, the very day it first came in was the big fires at the Fukushima nuclear plant following the tsunami and the big earthquake the day before, which was its last day in Pisces. So you can see when you get that shift, Pisces to Aries, it's very important. It's the end of the zodiac to the beginning of the zodiac, probably the most important cusp in the whole 360 degrees. Well, we're going to have Chiron coming to that point during 2018. And I think <clears throat> maybe stretches a little bit into 2019. If I'm lucky, I can find my paper that says it. If I'm lucky. Okay, it, Chiron enters Aries on 417. And it retreats back into Pisces on 925, where it stays until February 18th of 2019. And then it gets into Aries for good. So it's on that cusp, and it goes through the 29 degree of Pisces, which is that final degree of the zodiac, three times. And I wonder if I have that. I might. I did a lot of preparation, but there's just so many little data points. It's hard to um, keep track of everything. So let's see. Chiron, it goes through the 29 degree, um, March 30th to April 17th. Now that's one reason why you'd like to get your taxes done early this year because that can be chaos and confusion with that degree. And I'll tell you another thing, and you might like to go to the astrologybooth.com website and download the bar graph for 2018 on a page and it shows you all the times when Mercury is retrograde. But don't you know, Mercury is retrograde, finishing that up on the 15th income tax day it goes into the retrograde range on March 9th. So ideally, get your taxes done before then. But okay, here comes Chiron through this difficult degree that oftentimes has to do with selflessness. You know, Aries is the sign like all about me, and Pisces is the nothing about me. It's all about everybody. I'm just a drop in the ocean. So a lot of times it's when we feel invisible or we feel very selfless. It's a good time for being uh, charitable. March 30th to the 17th of April, again from the 25th of September to the 18th of October, and then the third time is in 2019 from January 28th to February 18th. So those are very tricky times, and you know, those are especially times when I would not want to have a health crisis if I could help it. I would not schedule surgery if I could help it. You know, it's just kind of a time where, yes, be working on healing. You know, go for massage, go for acupuncture, see your naturopath. But it's not really when you want to go have the foot doctor cut off your bone spurs. Um, feet are ruled by Pisces. Okay, so we have, that is a major shift. And while Neptune's been in Pisces, I'm sorry, Neptune's is, is in Pisces. While Chiron's been in Pisces, it's, I call it the repairman. Its other nickname is wounded healer. So it looks for what's weak, what's injured, what needs to be shored up or improved, and works to do that. So it is a sign, Pisces, that rules everything to do with alcohol, drugs, whether they're prescription or street drugs, um, the chemical industry, gas, fuel, things like that. Well, one of the big things we've seen during this period has been the focus on the opioid addiction and overdose crisis. So that's been a positive feature of Chiron going through Pisces. When it gets into Aries, where it will stay for, I don't know, over 10 years, then Aries is the sign that rules weaponry and metals. Um, amongst many other things. But I think what we're going to find then is that we really start addressing gun control issues or, you know, coming back to the idea of uh, stabilizing who has nuclear weapons, maybe reducing the arsenals, things like that. We could only hope. Okay, so that's one of the major sign changes. 
And the other big one is on the other end of Aries, Uranus is leaving and moving into Taurus. Well, Uranus rules electricity, so we've seen a lot more in the way of electric cars while Uranus has been in Aries. And we've seen, because um, Aries rules motors, um, we've also seen mm, some upgrading of the grid, um, more of the renewable uh, energy sources coming in, things like that. Mm, been an awful lot of rebellion. You know, near the beginning of that, we had the uh, Occupy Wall Street, Arab Spring, a lot of things like that. So, eh, humankind is probably never done with rebellion. But I do think that when Uranus comes into Taurus, it's going to slow things down a little bit because Taurus is a slow sign. It's not a like leap first and look second sign, which is the natural tendency for Uranus to operate that way anyway. So it's kind of got to be more, you know, once we get things going, then they really roll. But the inertia factor is very strong. And Taurus rules earth, plants, plant life, harvests, mm, you know, the quality of dirt even, and things like minerals. <clears throat> so we're going to see some surprises coming in with that. Maybe they'll even find... I don't know, some way to make electricity from rocks. Maybe we'll do something about fracking. Mm. It's terrible. Okay, so since we don't have all day here, I wanted to talk about mm, just maybe a rundown of the months of 2018 and which ones I think are going to be more difficult or less difficult. And as we go through the year, we'll talk about these in much more depth. But let me see if I can find my month page. It had nice highlights on it. It said things like certain months stressy, certain months not stressy. Well, maybe we don't have that. I do um, want to say that spring had the easiest seasonal chart. Fall had the toughest one. January and February are pretty tame. The year gets a little more difficult as it goes on. Now March, pretty stressy. April, I think maybe not quite so much. May, pretty nice month. June, nah, not so good. Then we get into July, hmm. Maybe it was mixed. I forget. August, I think, was mixed, but August has some tough stuff. We got the eclipses that are coming in, and they always happen near where the nodes are moving, and we've talked about this some before. The nodes are in Aquarius and Leo now, and they will be shifting into Cancer and Capricorn. So those are the four signs where we're having eclipses this year. The easiest eclipse is the February 15th new moon eclipse. So the four weeks that follow that are likely to be fairly good. <clears throat> fairly good as this year goes. The toughest eclipse was the July 27th lunar eclipse. And the August 11th solar eclipse was not much better. So things are going to be kind of hairy then. And even if you don't know astrology, but you're looking at just the black bars on the bar chart, around August and uh, July, there's seven to eight planets moving backwards simultaneously. It's just going to be hard to get things done. Another tricky time that comes in is November 16th. It's the end of the Venus retrograde on the same day that Mercury starts being retrograde. So it's like we just have no break. One of those two inner planets is retrograde from October 5th to December 6th. That's a solid two months. That's kind of a tough time. And the Mercury retrogrades are a little difficult this year. The entire summer Mercury retrograde takes place while Mars is retrograde the whole time and before and after. And that, again, is July into August. So that's where I'm saying those months are not so wonderful. I really wish I could find my month page. Anyway, um, 
what else was big. Hmm? High points. Some very nice days. Okay. See, this is the thing. Almost every time I identified a very nice day, it had something going on that was not so good, or it was in the second half of the moon cycle, which is not when you want to launch something or get married. But one of the best ones is Friday the 18th of May. I told you May was a pretty good month. And I rate the days one through five. Ones are not good at all. Fives are great. Well, guess what? There's not a single five the whole year. So a four is as good as it gets. And that's a four. The moon is in the waxing phase. That's where you want to have it. So it had some things to like about it. And yet it comes right in the middle of something that's a little bit hairy. Hmm. Yeah, here's something we should talk about. So I mentioned the nodes. And for a lot of 2018, Uranus is going to be traveling, making a T-square with the nodes. Then, for a lot of that time, Mars comes in and joins one of the nodes. After Mars is done with that, Venus comes in opposite Uranus and makes the big grand cross. This is all not good. This is all in the second half of the year, but it's not easy, friends. So I had another time that I liked pretty nicely around October 13th to the 14th, afternoon and evening of the 14th, quite good. And even the next day, the afternoon and evening of the 15th, very good. And that one's a four. So you can mark that on your calendar. Mm, I have a four day on March 4th. That's always one of my favorite days of the year because it's, I remember this from a riddle, it's the only day of the year that's a command, March 4th. So you can put that one on your calendar too. That one's another four. It says 4P actually on my ratings and the P means extra powerful version of the four. That means some big things are going on. And uh, yeah, speaking of my day ratings, now you're maybe used to having the printed calendar book. I'm not doing one of those for 2018. I am doing a modified, shorter little ebook. I'm going to call it the Daily Planets. It's going to be something like, well, it has to have a fake cover. Janet's 2018 Daily Planets. And it will have all the day ratings and the day messages that you've come to know and love. And if you sign up for my blog at the bottom of my, uh, any page on my astrologybooth.com website, You'll get the daily message and rating every morning in your email free from me. And if you want to purchase the ebook, you'll have all of them for the whole year. And a new feature, I don't know why I never thought of this one before, was to take the grid of the months and put the day ratings right onto that. <clears throat> so you'd be able to have this on your device. You're at the doctor's office. You go, oh, i got to find what's the best Thursday in October. <whistles> you can just scan down the list. So that will be very handy, and you'll want to have it. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about this for a moment. <clears throat> yeah, I've got a couple moments. So I said there's no heavy outer planets slow that are making a nasty connection in 2018. And that is true. But there's one of them that's starting to move into place for that. And a lot of times when... Um, like a 90 degree called the square, is within five degrees of exact, you really start to feel it. And this is going to be a tough one because we've got Pluto, that means evolution, change, throw everything out that's not working, uh, <clears throat> coming into the square with Eris, and Eris is rabble rouser and troublemaker, all about rivalry and chaos and discord. So, Pluto, planet of death, I don't know, maybe could be the death of discord? Doubt it. Wouldn't we like that? But this aspect starts to form right on New Year's Day. It comes into that five degree range. It's there all year. It gets down to one and a half um, by the end of the year. Mm, let's see. Oh, it comes, what? Yeah, one and a half. Yep, it's going to be exact, not until 2019 into 2020. But that's just around the corner, too. So if we think secrets are a real Pluto thing, hmm, interesting. Since Jupiter has come into Pluto's sign of Scorpio, all of a sudden, all these old sexual abuse accusations 
or accusations are current of prior past old sexual abuse are all out in the open now. And I think that's a good thing. But if we were to say, oh, crime, which is a major thing about Pluto, um, maybe something like crime wars, rival crime groups, like remember they used to have that in the 30s and stuff and everybody was shooting each other up. You might find something like that with Pluto square Eris. Eris is in Aries and Aries is a major battling kind of sign. So hmm. that's one of the, I think, hairiest things that's going on. The other one that's kind of not so nice, yeah, and it's, we've talked about it before here. It's the half square, 45 degrees. It acts almost as push and shove and, you know, frictiony as a square. And this is with Uranus and Neptune. And Uranus rules electricity and Neptune rules the ocean. Or, you know, it's kind of like fire and water. And those two don't mix, but water can conduct electricity awfully good. Uh, but we have this feeling of sort of the suffering side of Neptune and Pisces with the rebellious side of Uranus. Some of the time when it's semi-square, it does it like five times going into 2019 from 2017. Most of the time it's in Aries when it does that. It will do it, I think, once from Taurus. And I thought, oh, that sounds like it's just going to be kind of muddy, you know, water and earth. We'll see. But I do think that this is part of the, let's call them labor pains, of the birth of the age of Aquarius. Because <clears throat> we're ending 2,000 plus years of the age of Pisces, and we're going to be going into Aquarius. I feel it really starts around 2020, 2021, when there's a nice coming together that happens every 20 years, but in different signs between Jupiter and Saturn, and it will be in Aquarius. But these are the two planets, Uranus and Neptune, that rule the two signs next to each other. And signs next to each other don't have a lot in common, so it's um, not an easy thing. I do want to just do a very quick rundown. Who has the hardest time? Who has the easiest time? <clears throat> okay. Aries, tough year. Taurus, it's going to get a little hairy. Gemini and Virgo and Sagittarius, hardly anything happening. Pretty nice. Um, Cancer, Capricorn, a little tough. They're getting the eclipses. Uh, Scorpio we talked about. And the Aquarius, mm, not too bad. Um, one kind of hairy eclipse in July. Pisces, mm, tough. So you can kind of glean from some of the things we were talking about who's having the easier year. And that is the timer that tells me our program is at an end. How can that be? But we'll have plenty more time to talk about this in the new year. And you'll have a good year if you stay positive and keep looking up.